learners, welcome to this lesson. I'm teacher Agnes and today we are going to be discussing about square roots. Now square roots are opposites of squares, all right? So one is the reverse of the other. For example, um, the square of four is equal to 16. So four squared is equal to 16. Now 16 is the square of four, meaning that four is the square root of 16. Now the square root sign is represented like this. So if you want the square root of 16, then it will be equal to four. So anytime you're getting the square root, you will have to ask yourself, which number can you multiply by itself to give you that number? For instance, if you have you want to obtain the square root of 25, you have to ask yourself, which number can you multiply by itself to give you 25? And the answer is 5. If you multiply 5 by itself, then you get 25. So the square root of 25 is 5, right? But the simplest way, or rather the way, Yes, the simplest way to obtain the square root of a number, especially big numbers that you can't guess um, their square roots easily, is to write the numbers first in factor form by getting the prime factors of that number. So we are going to do that. We are going to begin with the number. Let's start with the number that we know, 144. Now we can express 144 as a product of its prime factors. So if we do this, we will divide 144 by 2 to obtain 72. Divide 72 by 2 to obtain 36. Divide 36 by 2 to obtain 18. Divide 18 by 2 to obtain 9. Then divide 9 by 3 to obtain 3. So we can write that 144 is equal to 2, how many 2's do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have 2 power 4 times 3 power 2. Now when obtaining the square root of 144, okay, when obtaining the square root of 144, for every two similar numbers, we will take 1. Because remember, this 2 times 2 gives you you know, 2 times 2 is like 2 squared, and the square root of 2 squared is 2. I hope I'm making sense that 2 times 2 gives you 4, which is the square. And the square root of 4 should be 2, because you multiply 2 by 2 to give you 4. So for every two of these numbers that are similar, then one of them forms the square root, okay? Times, for every two of these, one of them, forms the square root. For every two of these, one of them forms the square root. So basically here we have two power two times three power one. Now how does this relate to what we had at the top here? We had two power four, now the square root has two power two. Here we had three power two, the square root has three power one. So to obtain one from, one from the two, we have to divide 2 by 2, which is 1. To obtain 2 from 4, we have to divide 4 by 2, which is 2. So when obtaining the square root from a power, then you have to divide that power by 2. Remember, in squares, we were multiplying the power by 2. Now, in square roots, we do the opposite, which is to divide the square by 2. Now let us look at another example of how to determine the square root of a number using the factor method. So now we're going to do another example where we're going to determine the square root of 576 using the square, uh, using the factor method. So to do this, we are going to divide 576 by 2, and this is going to be equal to um, 288. 288 and then we divide this by 2 to obtain 144 divide by 2 again to obtain 72 divide by 2 to obtain 36 divide by 2 to obtain 18 divide by 2 to obtain 9 divide by 3 
to obtain 3. So 576 will be equal to, um, in power form, we have how many tools? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is 2 power 6, all right? 2 power 6 multiplied by 1, 2. We have 2 threes, so 3 power 2. Now to obtain the square root of 576, we will have to divide the power by 2. So where we have 2 power 6, we will have 2 power 6 divided by 2 is 3 times 3. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the square root of 576 will be equal to 3 power 3 times 3 power 1. If we need to express this back to number form, this will be equal to 2 power 3 is 8, and then 3 power 1 is 3. So 8 times 3 is equal to 24. So the square root of 576 is equivalent to 24. Now, if you are dealing with a fraction and you need to get its square root, then you follow the same rules. So if you have a fraction like 16 over 25, and you need to get the square root of this, then you get the square root of the numerator first, then the square root of the denominator. Now we know that the square root of 16 is 4, because if you multiply 4 by 4, you get 16. The square root of 25 is 5, because if you multiply 5 by 5, you get 25. However, if you're not able to get this elementally, you can also try using the factor method. So if you have another fraction like 9 over 16, then here the square root will be, the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 16 is 4. So 3 over 4 is the square root of 9 over 16. So now when it comes to the, when it comes to decimal numbers, how do we determine the square root? Now for us to determine the square root of decimal numbers or huge numbers, we use the mathematical table. So now we are going to discuss how we can determine the square root of a number from the mathematical table. Now learners, when you are using the mathematical table to determine the square root of a number, the first thing that you must do is to check the title and confirm that you are using the tables for square roots and not for any other function. So for square roots, like you can see, we have tables of numbers running from 1.0 all the way to 5.3. Then we have another page running from 5.4 all the way to 9.9. .9. Then we have another page running from 10 all the way to 53. All right. Then we have the final page that runs from 54 all the way to 99. So it is very possible to determine the square root of numbers that we that are ranging from 1 to 99.99. .99. So any numbers below 1 or above 99.99, .99, we will have to discuss how to determine them. So to uh, practice this, we are going to start by looking at some examples. So we are going to start by determining the square root of, so remember the square root sign, we are going to start by determining the square root of 64. Let us start with something that we know, the square root of 64. So we'll go back to our tables and look for 64. So this is where we have 64, all right? And according to the table, the square root of 64 is 8.0. 0, 0, okay. So 8.0 is just enough. So the square root of 64 will be equal to um, 8.0, which is actually equal to 8, and this we can confirm is true. Now, what if we have a number that is not a perfect square, like the square root of 71? 
we do not know the square root of 71 because there are, we don't know two whole natural numbers that can be multi that can be multiplied you know we don't have a natural number can be multiplied by itself to give you 71 so we have to look for the square root of 71 from the tables and that means that you will have decimal places so we go back to our table and trace square 71 is here is 71 and according to the table the square root of 71 is 8.4261 so the square root of 71 is 8.4261 now what about when we have a number that has one decimal place so for instance, you can get the square root of 19.5. So we go to the tables and trace where 19 is. So 19, we have it in the third page of square root. So this is 19. We want 19.5. So if you check up here, you can see 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So we are interested in 19.5. So 19.5 brings us here to 4159. However, you must ensure that you check the number in the first in the first column that comes before the decimal point. So in this case we have 4.3. So this 4 is supposed to be used with every of these. So in this case it should be 4.3704. 4.3818 and so on. So we have the form and the form 159. So the square root of 19.5 is going to be 4.4159. So this is equal to 4. Point, um, 4.4159. So do not forget this form. It is only available in the column of 0, 0.0, so it's supposed to be used with every other column. Now, what if you have uh, a number with two decimal places? So let us look uh, for the square root of uh, 6.78. All right, 6.78. So we will look for 6.7 in the tables. 6.7. So tracing 6.7, this is 6.7, and then 8, all right, 6.78, this is the, like you can see, where we have 6.7 in the first column, we have 2 points. So 2 points should be used with every one of these numbers, so 2.6038, this is where we have the A column, so 2.6038. This will be equal to six point um two point six zero three eight. Now I want us to check when we have four significant figures like uh, five point nine three two five point nine. So this is what we look for in the tables five point nine. So here is five point nine. All right. Then the next number is 3, so it's 5.93. So remember, here we begin with 2.4352. Then we have another number, which is 2. The last decimal place is 2. So we come to this column of adding, and we check the second column that is written 2, and it reads the value 4. So we need to add 4 to uh, 2.4352. So we will record here that we have 2.4352 and then we add 4. So 2 plus 4 is 6, then here we have 5, 3, 4, and then 2. So the square root of 5.932 will be equal to 2.4356. And that is how you determine the square root of numbers that are within the range of 1 to 19.99. Now the same case, just like we discussed in squares, if you have a number that has more than four significant figures, 
then you will have to approximate it to four significant figures for you to use the tables. So if you have a number like um, 16, 27, 8, 1, these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 significant figures. Now you cannot be able to read uh, 1 from the tables. So you have to write your number correct to four significant figures. So this will become the square root of, right? So 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, you divide at that point. Now since 1 is less than 5, we are going to drop it and our number will be 16.78. So now we are going to determine the square root of 16.78. So you look for 16 in your table. So here we have 16. So you realize it begins with 4 point. So 4 point, uh, 16, 7. So the number is 16.7. So we check the seventh column. So that reads us 0 0.866. And then we check the eighth column, which reads us 99. All right. So now we are going to have 4 point zero eight six six plus ninety nine. So this is equal to four point zero eight six six plus ninety-nine. So six plus nine is fifteen, five carry one as one plus six seven plus nine sixteen carry one then one plus eight is nine then we have the zero and then we have the four. So the square root of 16.78 is equal to 4.0965. So now we are going to look at if you have a number that is less than 1, how do you determine the square root? And if you have a number that is greater than 99.99, how do you determine the square root? Now when determining the square root of a number that is less than 1, I need you to remember that you cannot read a number that is less than 1 from the tables. For instance, if you have 0 0.067, you cannot read 0, 0.0 in the tables. So you need to move the decimal point to, you know, between the first two non-zero digits, okay? So if you move the decimal point, uh, Remember here we are determining the square root. You remove the decimal point twice. And this will be equal to the square root of the, um, 6.7 times 10 power negative 2. Because we have moved the decimal point forward, so the power is negative. Now I need you to remember something, especially when it comes to when, when it comes to the power. In the introduction, we said that the square root of a power is determined by is determined by dividing the power by two. So if in the process of writing your number in standard form, you realize that the power is an odd number, then it means you have to do something else, which I am going to explain in the next example. But for this example, we are good to go because the power of ten is a is an even number. So we are going to get the square root of 6.7 and then the square root of 10 power negative 2. So the square root of 6.7 can be read from the tables. So from the tables, you're going to refer to 6.7 and the square root is 2.5884. So we're going to record that as 2.5. Eight eight four. That is the square root of six point seven. You're going to multiply this by the square root of ten power negative two. In the introduction, we said that the square root of a power is determined by dividing the power by two. So ten power negative two square root will be. We take the negative two and divide it by two to obtain negative one. All right. 10 power negative 2, we divide the power by 2 to obtain negative 1. So now, to write this back in number form, since we are multiplying by 10 power negative 1, we will have to move the decimal point backwards once. Alright? 
So this will be equal to 0. We will move it backwards once. It becomes 0 0.25884. All right? And that is the square root of 0 0.067. Now let us look at another example. Now looking at example 2, um, we are going to determine the square root of 0 0.005. Eight, three. All right. Now, in this case, if we write our number in standard form, we move the decimal point forward one, two, three times. So this will be equal to five point eight three times ten power negative three. Remember, we are getting the square root. Now we are going to move the decimal point another one step forward so that this can change into 10 power negative 4. So this is going to be equal to 58.3 times 10 power negative 4. Then we determine the square root. And this is okay because remember, for tables of square roots, we can read uh, square roots between 1 and 99 directly in the table. 58.3 is between 1 and 99. So this is perfect. So now we're going to determine the square root of 58. Point three, and then the square root of 10 power negative 4. So from the tables, we are going to read 58.3. So this is 58, all right, 58, and then 0.3. So this is where they coincide, 58.3. Now you notice that after 58, we have 7 points. So this is going to be 7.6354. All right, seven point five six nine. So this is going to be equal to um seven point six three five four, and then we multiply by the square root of ten power negative four, which is ten power negative two, because to get square root of a power, we divide the power by two. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Now to write this in number form, we will have to move the decimal point twice backwards because this is a negative. So 1, 2 times, it becomes 0 0.07635. Uh, and that is how you determine the square root of a number that is less than 1. Always ensure that after you write it in standard form, check that the power, okay, the power of 10 is a positive number. What about when you have a number that is greater than 99? For example, if you have a number like 464 and you need to determine the square root of this number. Now remember we can't read this directly from the table. Okay, you can't read this directly from the table because we can only read values between 1 and 10. So you will have to write it in standard form. So the decimal point is, you know, after the 4, so you move it backward twice. So this number will be equal to 4.64 times 10 power 2. So the power is positive because we have moved the decimal point backwards. And then we are determining the square root of this. So before you proceed, make sure that you confirm that the power of 10 is an even number. And since ours is an even number, then you can continue. So from the table, we are going to trace 4.694. 4 so we have 4.6, here is 4.6, 4.6 and then 0.4. So this is where we have 4. So this begins with 2 point. So it's going to be 2 point 1 5 4 1. So this is going to be equal to uh, 2 point 1 5 4 1. That is the square root of 4.64 from the tables. And then we multiply by the square root of 10 power 2. So we need to divide the power by 2 so that we get 10 power 1. 
Now to convert this back into a number, since we are multiplying by 10 power 1, we move the decimal point forward one time. So this is going to be equal to 21.541. Now looking at another example for a number that is greater than um, 99, we are going to determine the square root of um, 3002. 3002. And this is going to be equal to, if we write this in standard form, the decimal point is here. So we move it backwards, one, two, three. Now if we move it backwards three times, then the power is going to be an odd number, times 10 power three. So instead, we are going to move the, um, the decimal point backwards two times. So from here, one, two, so that the power of 10 is an odd number. So this will become 30.02 times 10 power, Two. Now this is okay because we can read the square root of 30 uh, in the table and 2 is divisible by 2. Unlike when we would have had 3.002 and then have 10 power, power 3. Now since 3 is an odd number, we cannot get the square root of 10 power 3. So we work with 30.02 times 10 power 2. So now we are going to read the square root of 30.02 from the tables, 30.02, so this is 30, 30.0, which reads 5.47722, um, then uh, we have 2 as the final decimal point, and in the column of Abby, in the column of 2, we have 18. So we are going to add 18 to 5.4772. So we add 18 here to obtain 0, we carry 1. 1 plus 7 is 8, plus 1 is 9. Then we have the 7, 4, then 5. So we have 5.4790 times the square root of 10 power 2 is 10 power 1 because we would take 2 and divide it by 2. Now to convert this back into a number, since we are multiplying by 10 power 1, we will move the decimal point forward one time. So this will become 54.790. So the square root of 3002 is 54.790. Now that is how you determine square roots of numbers and in a case where you are required to perform other operations such as addition or subtraction of square roots of numbers, then you will have to determine the square roots of those numbers and then perform your operation. An example of that sort is if you need If you want to add the square root of 44.6 plus the square root of 1.78, then you would need to determine the square root of 44.6 first. So the square root of 44.6 will be equal to, from the table, you check the square root of 44.6. So the square root of 44.6, we're going to read it from the table. So 44, this is 44, it begins with 6 point. So 44.6, so 0.6, here it is. So 6.6783. 6.6783. Then we get the square root of 1. 0.78 and this will be equal to um we check from the tables we trace 1.7 so 1.7 okay it begins with one point then the next one is eight 33 uh three three four two so this is one point three three four two one point three three four two now, having determined the square roots of these two numbers, we are now going to add them. 
So we will have 6.6783 plus 1.3342. So to add this, we have 3 plus 2, which is 5. 8 plus 4 is 12, so 2 carry 1. 1 plus 7 is 8, plus 3, 11, 1 carry 1. 1 plus 6, 7, plus 3, 10, so 0 carry 1. So 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 1, which is 8. So the sum of the two square roots will be 8.0125. Now having understood the concept of determining the square root of numbers, we are now going to do uh, an exercise. I'm going to give you an assignment that you are going to attempt on your own. So determine, so use tables, use tables to find, okay, use tables to find the square root of uh, 15, the square root of 0 0.069 the square root of 0 0.00712 the square root of 1000 and then finally determine the sum of the square root of 24 and the square root of 0 0.78 all right so attempt these questions and i am sure that you have mastered the art of determining the square root using the mathematical table so thank you so much for being in this lesson see you in the next lesson